Miller time. I could really use one right now. But unfortunately, there's water in this glass. Well, what do you mean it's Miller time? Because the Millers that we're going to talk about today is Irvin and Andy Miller of Harness Racing fame. You know, the best part about doing this show, Joe, is I get to jump over the horse racing fence and meet the people in the harness world. And these guys come from humble beginnings, but they're superstars in the sport of horse racing. When one thinks about the Amish community, several things come to mind. A simple lifestyle with dedication to work, family, and God. Raised Amish in downstate Arthur, Illinois, Irvin and Andy Miller were raised sitting behind a horse and a buggy. But as those Amish workhorses tugged on the lines, a passion for horse racing was tugging at their hearts. I was uh, raised Amish with horses, where we used horses for transportation and just got hooked on it, I guess. Liked horses my whole life. We first started out with um, some draft horses and then got into these standard bred some and just got where we really like it. Two weeks out of eighth grade, I went to work for a Santa bred breeding farm, harness horse breeding farm, and I worked there for six years. So I, I guess, graduated there from uh, cleaning stalls and taking care of horses up to uh, training horses and such for them. That early desire to work with horses has given Irvin Miller purse earnings of over $2 million and over 215 winners and ranks ninth nationally. I race Lexington, Freehold, uh, Jersey in Canada. I got a horse that's in Canada Monday night going for 480000 We have 30 plus employees, eight or nine trainers and the rest of them are caretakers and uh, maybe managers of the stable, people that kind of keep an eye on what all goes on. Back in those early days when he decided to leave the Amish lifestyle behind, he brought with him a close friend, his brother Andy Miller, and together the team has been unstoppable. Andy Miller has more than 3,500 winners to his credit and has amassed more than 27.4 million in purses. Andy tries to drive a great deal for his brother Irvin, but each note, there are differences between them. I'm probably a little higher strung and stuff than he is because I train, I got to deal with all the employees, the uh, owners, everything. He can be a little more laid back because he just, he's got to show up here every night to drive and think about his drives a little more. When he started driving for me, it was a little tense because um, he tried to overdo it just because they were my horses. He wanted to do better for me than he did the average person. He worked hard at it and sometimes it didn't work out the way it should have. He's a little bigger than I am and uh, I'm at the top end for the size of a driver, but uh, you know that's kind of the avenue I took and he took the train and he did some driving earlier. We're always real competitive, but we uh, try and keep it to where we can do the best for each other and, uh, and uh, make it all work out real well. Differences aside, they share the same feelings on a certain track and several horses that they have trained and drove together. Springfield probably, that's where I train and that's where I broke the most records and went the biggest miles. Springfield, the state fair. I really like to drive at Springfield and and do coin and and uh, you know I I like the big tracks but probably Springfield. They both agree on their favorite racetrack, but both share different interests when it comes to their best racehorses. Probably one of the biggest moments, just separate race, was um, Incredible Tilly winning at Springfield, uh, two-year-old filly, 51 and four off a quarter and 24 and four part. That was incredible. And then another time was a super night. A few years back, I win uh, both ends of the orange and blue with the Colton Philly. The same year, Incredible Tilly was a two-year-old. There's several of them, but uh, you know, I have some favorites like Incredible Tilly and Loyal Opposition that's in tonight. Um, Taser Gun's one of my favorites. Um, there's several others. It's hard to think of all of them right now, but there's, there's several of them that I really enjoy driving. Drawing a less than perfect post position and surrounded by two other possible favorites, loyal opposition brought them all together for a family portrait when she won the Grandma Anne in an impressive 151 and 2. Maybe just next time, you know, was it necessary to win by six? <laughs> <laughs> On Super Night, you want to make sure you got the win. You don't want to get halfway down the stretch and get caught. With all the success that they've achieved in their prospective roles in harness racing, each still aspires to win some important races. There's a lot of goals, but I would love to win a million dollar race. I'd like to win the Hamiltonian someday for Trotters, three-year-old Trotters. Still close as brothers, they both believe that as a team, sooner or later, they'll bring out the best in a horse. 
Yeah. Well, Leanne, I know when I was a kid, all I wanted to do was run out, play baseball, crank my music, and enjoy myself. But that's a lot more difficult, obviously, for someone that's Amish. Well, that's true. And of course, being teenagers, what was the first thing you wanted? You wanted your own set of wheels. Well, they don't drive cars. But a little friend told me a story about Andy Miller, who, you know, he was a little shy to share this on camera. He took and he put a stereo system in his Amish buggy and used to crank up Aerosmith and cruise down the road in his buggy. So teenagers will always find a way to be teenagers. Yes, 